Um, so welcome to the postgrad information webinar on the disability service. My name is Courtney McGraw and I'm the graduate intern for the disability service this year. So uh, for the year I'll be working on the disability service comms and also working on the Trinity Ability Co-op, which you may have heard of. It's a cooperative of students with disabilities working towards radical inclusion on campus. So uh, if that's something that you are interested in getting involved in, I'll send a link into the chat after. But uh, here today also is Jacqueline Riley, who's a disability officer in the disability service, and also Sarah Kift, who is the GSU officer for students with dis graduate students with disabilities. And they'll be talking later on in the information session. And this session is hopefully recorded. We're just uh, trying to navigate if live means recorded or not, but um, these uh, slides could be uh, shared on uh, social media so you can find that, find them uh, later or circulated through email. And the, if you click the three buttons, uh, three dots on the side, you can turn on closed captions if uh, you need to use that. Um, and then we'll also at the end we will have a Q&A session, so um, at the end you can put in any questions in the chat as you go along. It might, a question might come up uh, based on the slides that you see, so just put that into the chat and then we'll answer it at the end. So this is an outline of what we will be discussing today. So we'll uh, give some information on the disability service, information on uh, applying for reasonable accommodations, and how you can then apply to the disability service and then Declan will continue talking about challenges facing uh, postgraduate students with disabilities, supports for postgraduate students and the postgraduate advisory service and then Sarah will talk about the Trinity Graduate Students Union, the forum for staff and PhD students with disabilities and the Disability Research Network and Sarah will then give a bit of an overview on her experiences with the disability service and her time as a postgraduate student with a disability studying at Trinity. So this is the link to the disability service website. So uh, if you see here, this is the, basically the, the home page for the disability service. So you can book an appointment. We have uh, drop-ins uh, every day online and uh, like 11 to one then one to three uh, that you can book for a 15 minute uh, slot if you have any questions um, and you can also email askds at tcd.ie and uh, the website's just a great uh, place to look for any information you have at all about the disability service. There's uh, a lot of information there. There's information specifically for postgraduates so that you can just uh, check and find out more. Um, before you might uh, apply for reasonable accommodations or if you just want to learn more about the service. Here is just an, an overview of uh, all the disability service applications in semester one from 2020 to 21 uh, by disability type. So uh, there's a large amount of uh, mental health of 478 and then specific learning uh, disability, which is uh, 385, significant ongoing illness at 285, uh, ASD, uh, so autism, autism spectrum disorder at 148, and then ADD, 144, uh, DCD is dyspraxia at 108, uh, physical disability at 112, and Neuro, uh, that's 75, deaf or hard of hearing. Can't really see that because, oh wait, I can see it now. So that's uh, at 40 and then blind, emotionally impaired at 31, and then uh, speech at 15. So this is an overview of the service. If you have or you don't know much about it or you haven't, um, heard about the service before, your new study in at Trinity. So the Trinity Disability Service began in uh, 2000 and is currently based in room 2054 in the Arts Building and we hope next year that we'll be moving to our new space in Printing House Square. So that would be a very exciting time that we'll have a room for 
students who uh, book for say talks and events and it'll just be a wider space as well. Um, so we're excited to to move there next year. And in 2020-21 there was uh, 1,888 uh, students uh, using the service with 1,596 undergraduates and 164 postgraduates. And the disability service provides students with a needs assessment and agrees reasonable accommodations. We'll talk about more about later in the slides. And reasonable accommodations are provided to alleviate substantial disadvantages for students with disabilities. And the reasonable accommodations can be communicated to schools to land support. So this ensures that your supports are provided uh, by um, the lecturers and that's uh, what's communicated from the disability service. You may or may not have heard of a uh, lens report. So the lens report stands for learning educational needs summary. And here's an example of a lens report. So when you have a meeting with your disability officer and then you have a needs assessment, here you'll discuss what previous supports you may have had or what supports you think that um, would be best suited to you and based on your uh, learning requirements for say your, your postgraduate studies and uh, what you think based on your disability type which would be most helpful to you. So your disability officer will go through in detail of say assistive technology that could be useful for you or occupational therapy as well. So it really depends on the needs that uh, you require. So here's just an example of a lens report. So it might be a bit blurry there, but it would have uh, the student's uh, name and then their disability officer and their disability type and who their college tutor is, which is important in terms of like extension. So it's good to be aware of who your uh, tutor is as well. And then there, so with the lens report, um, by agreeing to it, you're agreeing that uh, this information can, can be disclosed on to your lecturer or your school so that you are provided with the supports um, for your studies. And there's also uh, a list of the uh, reasonable accommodation that you require. So some of the examples here is occupational therapy, cystic assistive technology, uh, educational support worker, library supports, so additional book allowance, uh, having a locker and yeah and then uh, you can have separate um, accommodations for exams so this might be different from postgrads as it could be more uh, continuous rather than uh, examination so this will be different and there's also uh, accommodations for uh, placement so this might be for uh, teaching. So this will be uh, different to maybe the supports that you need for lectures. So it's just uh, this document, as we call it, we call it uh, your passport uh, for your supports around college. So um, it's just uh, really uh, good to be familiar with what it is and how important it is for to ensure that you get your supports um, during your studies. So I'm going to pass you on to Jacqueline Riley now. Thanks, Courtney. Uh, hi, I'm Declan Riley and I'm a disability officer in the Disability Service in Trinity College. And uh, over the last uh, two years, we've been uh, putting additional emphasis on uh, promoting and communicating the supports for, for postgraduate students. Uh, as Courtney mentioned there, um, you know, there's a lot of undergrads registered with the service, so uh, comparatively fewer postgrads, so we, we want to try and make sure that every postgraduate um, is aware of the service and has the opportunity to apply and uh, seek support if, if they need to. So in relation to how to apply to the service, um, you can apply uh, through your portal and um, yeah, I'll, I'll show you that in a second, but just on this slide here is our own web page where we actually have a step-by-step -step guide on all of the details explaining uh, how to go about applying to us. Uh, you, you need to uh, provide documentation at the last point and you need to have some evidence of disability or a document to upload at the end. Um, so that's important, but the first part of it is really about uh, agreeing to, to disclosures and to 
the, the reasonable accommodation policy and, and the code of practice. So I'd encourage you to, uh, to have a look at the information here about how to apply to the disability service there. It's on our, our home page uh, in that middle section. And there's a short, there's a short video uh, on giving an overview of it. And as I said, underneath there, there's a step-by-step -step guide. Um, in the next slide then, uh, it shows, this is just a screenshot, two screenshots of uh, what you actually see in your portal when you go to, to apply. So if you log into my.tcd.ie uh, and then if you choose the My Disability Service tab, uh, that opens up the application for you. And uh, as I said, you just put in some of your details, your, your, you know, your name, your student number, etc. And go through the steps uh, one by one, answering some basic questions. And at the end, you get to uh, upload your documentation. And once you've submitted that, uh, then somebody in the disability service, myself or a colleague of mine, will be in contact with you to invite you for uh, a needs assessment. So if you have queries um, prior to or during the application process, or if you'd like to even have an informal discussion about what supports might be available or any concerns that you might have about the implications of applying to us, you can certainly contact us for a conversation and we're happy to meet with you. Uh, in person in, in the arts building in, the, in room 2054, or uh, we can discuss things over the phone, or we can have a, a Teams meeting, for example. So that's no problem at all if you want to contact us uh, with any of those issues. We can certainly uh, try to address them as best we can. So um, if you have any questions at the moment, you can put them into the chat function uh, in, in the live Teams event. Or if you want to follow up afterwards, as I said, an email to ask the S at tcd.ie is the best uh, the best way of contacting us. OK, so move on then. Just to say that, um, you know, there's postgraduate students face many of the same types of struggles that undergraduates face. But I mean, there is, uh, you know, there's good evidence and this is monitored nationally and internationally uh, around the different types of specific uh, difficulties that postgraduates face. So, for example, um, the Irish uh, Survey of Student Engagement for Postgraduate Research Students. Uh, there's a new report uh, due out soon. I think they do this. They do this uh, survey every two years. The most recent publication there is, you know, 2018. And um, if you look up, for example, the the, the biggest struggles of, of PhD students, uh, and this covers a lot of research students as well. Um, the, the most common challenges are feelings of isolation and um, stress or anxiety, a conflict with a supervisor and um, finances and um, a lack of work life balance, uh, issues with time management, feelings of uh, having a lack of personal support. And that would be in particular comparison to undergraduate, um, the undergraduate experience and then also a lack of institutional support. So depending on you know, what universities you've been to in the past and also even in, here within Trinity, um, students can have different experiences depending on the, the type of program they're on or the type of, you know, the type of area that they're in. Uh, other concerns then would be concerns for the future and then issues of motivation as well, particularly with long, uh, long research projects such as a PhD that's done over several years. So these are kind of common challenges facing um, postgrad students. And then in the next slide, um, you know, on top of that, people with disabilities and students with disabilities do face then additional challenges. So they have all of the previous issues that can crop up. And on top of that, then there's a direct impact of a disability on their course. So issues such as attendance or, you know, the ability to meet uh, get academic work done. And then the indirect impact uh, of their disability on on their course and all of the issues that were mentioned in the previous slide that, that a, a lot of uh, postgrad students face as well. So having a disability can exacerbate, you know, make those other issues um, more difficult. Um, there's also then issues of, you know, whether or not to disclose to the department or to the school. Uh, and that's a very common challenge because particularly at postgraduate level, the units tend to be a lot smaller. Um, you could be just it could be just a one to one or a one to two or three small relationship with supervising staff or a small unit. And the, the decision to disclose is, is, is a much bigger decision than it would be at an undergraduate level where you might be disclosing to, to 10 or 12 people and then 
uh, you know, six months later, you have a different group of people. Um, what to request in terms of reasonable accommodations? Uh, sometimes it's not as clear cut as to what what accommodations you know suit the needs of a particular student on a postgraduate course. Um, sometimes the postgraduate uh, the journey is not as straightforward as it is at undergraduate level. So how to, to request reasonable accommodations? Sometimes can students do need additional support with that? And then there's also issues in resolving. Uh, the impact, the issues related to the impact of the disability or accommodations. Um, that's that's something that students also need support with. Uh, and finally, then the last two things would be meeting the deadlines and managing the workload. So um, deadlines sometimes can be extended, uh, sometimes they can't. Depends on the the nature of the course. Some you know the the master's courses are one year long. Um, you can only extend the deadlines out so far before you have to repeat the year and come into the, the next academic year, whereas a PhD level um, is sometimes it's possible to uh, extend things out into another year. It, do, it, it varies. Um, and then other concerns um, people have then um, in relation to disability sometimes is around employment and the transition from postgraduate studies to employment. So all of these areas have come up before and students have been supported through these uh, through these these challenges. Um, so if you're feeling that you know this affects you in any way, um, certainly do contact us and uh, we'll do our best to support you and guide you through it. I'll just move on then to the next slide. So um, as I said, we've, we've spent a bit more time over the last year or two uh, publicizing and communicating the supports for postgraduate students. So this is just, a, for example, a video that's available now, which we've used at our open day and it's on our website and there's a link to it under postgraduate supports and, and that's the YouTube link to it there. I think uh, Sarah, who will be speaking in a minute, um, takes a leading role in this video and other uh, postgraduate students as well who, who've used the services in the past. So that's a two minute video, so I'd, I'd encourage you to look at that as well. And uh, just briefly then on the supports available, uh, we have a huge variety of supports available. This is just, a, I suppose, a highlight level overview. Um, you know, there's academic supports, uh, and that's that's a very broad range of supports um, that can be provided through the school themselves or academic support areas within the disability service. We have specialist uh, academic staff that work with students directly. There's the student learning and development. And as I said, the schools themselves do provide additional academic support as well. Um, we have an assistive technology officer and we have assistive technology resources in the libraries and we have equipment available and software and guidance and advice around how to manage that. We also provide supports and referrals around career planning um, and job applications, things like CVs, uh, career boot camps, disclosures, uh, interview preparations, uh, all of those type of things we've provided for students uh, with support in the past. Uh, and then a very common uh, support that a lot of students apply to as far as exam accommodations. Um, anywhere, anytime there's exams, you know, students who register with us can apply for additional time, you know, different types of venues, the use of technology uh, or other supports in exams. Um, and the library supports will be another another type of supports that are provided. Um, uh, for postgraduate level, that some, sometimes means getting study spaces. Uh, available or getting assistance within the library to access material. And as uh, Courtney mentioned earlier, we, we also provide an occupational therapy support service. That's a one to one support that's available to students who need it at, at undergrad and uh, postgraduate level. And then another uh, uh, support we provide is assistance with um, and applications for rooms on campus or in Trinity Hall uh, due to special considerations. So we have um, rooms available for students who who require um, a room due to uh, a disability or the impact of a disability. So there's a lot more available, a lot more detail available uh, on our supports uh, on the website there, Disability Services. Uh, the link is in the top there. And I just want to say as well that uh, this is just an overview of what the, the goals are in relation to postgraduate supports. Overall, the disability service is really looking to enhance the student experience for postgraduate students uh, by you know, increased engagement and being in contact with students and with, with staff at postgraduate level. 
uh, to communicate the supports available and provide more supports directly to staff uh, at, who, who are working with postgraduate students on postgraduate courses throughout the schools in the university and directly with um, with students themselves and also you know liaising with the other support services um, so that we can uh, better provide supports for students with uh, with disabilities at, at a postgraduate level. So as I said, you know our overall gain, gain is to um, increase the support and also increase the numbers of, of students. We know there's probably a lot more postgrads uh, in Trinity who could be availing of our support than, than actually do. So we're looking to try and change that. OK, I'm going to uh, hand over to um, to Sarah now, my colleague. So Sarah, over to you. Thank you so much, Declan. So as Courtney and Declan man mentioned before, um, I'm a postgraduate student here at Trinity. I'm a student with disabilities, and I'm also the disability officer for the Graduate Student Union. Um, I'm the first person to hold that position, so that's kind of allowed more disability representation throughout Trinity. Um, and it's also allowed me a really great opportunity to work with disability services for things like this to raise some awareness about what the services for postgraduates that are available are. So to that end, there's a couple specific services within Trinity that are available for postgrads. So this particular service that's on the screen, the Graduate Studies Office, this is not specific to students with disabilities. This is available to all graduate students, um, but they can help with a whole bunch of resources. They have the forms available on their, their site over here for things like um, extensions or withdrawals or if you need to go off books. So this is just a good resource to, um, to kind of keep in your back pocket in case you need some information on that. So another service, this is also not specific to postgraduates with disabilities, but available to all postgraduates, is a postgraduate advisory service. This service is pretty interesting because sometimes the postgraduate relationship, um, especially you know at the PhD level, can be very one to one with just your supervisor. And sometimes there can be issues or conflicts or ways that you might need somebody external to weigh in. So the postgraduate service can also offer some assistance with um, managing those relationships uh, within your postgraduate experience if you need that as well. So they also, it looks like they have drop-in services and you can also make an appointment with them. And they have a number of resources that are available to kind of guide you through that postgraduate journey so that you're really not on it, you know, on your own just between you and your supervisor. There are additional supports available there. So as I mentioned briefly, I'm the Disability Officer for the Graduate Students Union, um, which represents all postgraduates, obviously not specific to those with disability. And the, the whole point is to help with student life specific to graduate students. So things are very different or can be very different for postgraduates than undergraduates. So really helping with supporting all those areas that, are, that are affect postgraduates, whether it's life, other events or also kind of the social events that go along with it. Being the disability officer has allowed me to raise more disability awareness at um, all the GSU events and try to make them more accessible to all. So that's a it's been a wonderful position. So one of the other options that I'm very excited to have been a part of and continue to be a part of is the forum for disabled students, um, PhD students and staff. So this forum has a couple different features, I should say. We have a disability tea, which I like to call the disability. I like bad puns, what can I say? Um, and we do this once a month on the first Friday. It's a half an hour, it's virtual, it's very informal, but it's been a wonderful support for me personally. The social avenue is great, but talking with other students and staff who have a whole variety of disabilities, both hidden and visible, really allows you to kind of brainstorm things you might not even have known were accommodations or issues or problems. Disability Services is great at talking with your individual counselor about finding those accommodations, but sometimes just talking with other students and staff who may have gone through a similar process can really just raise some ideas about other options or other techniques or strategies that might work for you as well. So that's kind of the social aspect of the disability, but also it's it's wonderful in terms of academic help as well. We also do a couple events a year that are more sort of formal events. So we just did one on ableism in academia that was really well received. 
Um, often we have guest speakers, but it's it's a lovely way of meeting other people in the community who also have disabilities um, and just kind of networking with them as well. So the other option within Trinity is the Disability Research Network. Now this is similar to the forum, but slightly different. So the forum is really made up of those with disabilities, both hidden and visible, and staff and PhDs. The Disability Research Network is also staff and PhDs, um, or postgraduates in general. Master's students are welcome to join as well. The focus is slightly different. So this is also made up of those without disabilities, but who are researching disability or interested in the field of disability as well. So some people are doing projects that overlap with each other. Um, through this particular forum, we've also, sorry, the network, we've also uh, do various events a year, also raising awareness about disability, but you're welcome to join either, both of these, there's no, um, you can join as many as you'd like. This is also a really good collaborative network. We've also looked through this network at creating more collaborative research opportunities for those who are interested in pursuing research in the field of disability. So there may be collaborative opportunities within the research network as well. So those are our formal bits of the slide, but I'd like to talk just for a couple minutes about my experience with disability services. So as I mentioned before, um, I'm a postgraduate with various disabilities and very early on in my career here at Trinity, I was really lucky to be able to hook in with disability services. I went through the process that Declan and Courtney had described, so went through, did a lens report. I'm very lucky to be in the discipline of occupational therapy myself, so it was pretty well understood what the kind of accommodations that I needed were, and that was well received within my department. But we've been able to come up with a whole host of things that have really assisted for my PhD. So things like um, different services for transcription, different services through the library, um, and different resources for doing a piece of my research that's qualitative that I wouldn't have known about or been able to have access to on my own. So that has really helped my postgraduate journey. Um, and I'm very appreciative of that. So now any questions, I would like to open it up. And yeah, we're happy to answer.